So we are live on Facebook and we're live on Instagram. And hello, Yandre. It's lovely to chat to you again on this beautiful Thursday morning. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Um, no complaints. Excited. Lots of happenings. Great. Your side, everything is good, I assume. Yes, Always I mean, good. living here on the side of the, the country, you know, like Cape Town. Mm vibes uh it's always good like there's no reason ever not to be happy so it's it's really great um yeah hello guys so we are here on instagram as well yay i'm here finally yes so we are chatting all things business all things entrepreneurship all things social media and mindset and if you're watching please go over to the comments right now tell us where you're watching from and also, we want your questions. What questions do you have with uh, maybe getting clients, social media, maybe going live? Maybe you also want to go live like we do. I was actually telling someone um, yesterday to, to do this because going live is part of, you know, connecting to people out there and building your brand. And building brand is quite a big thing, Um you know, I think a lot of people don't get that, um, the importance of, of building brand. It's Listen, um, that's the biggest ROI that I've seen, uh, oh, I think wow. since I've started in 2000 and I think 18, you know, I've always tried to put a face behind, you know, the, the agency side, which is V8 and, um, creating a bit of a, a personal brand in a, in a sense for the agency. And I think that's probably one of the reasons we also grew so quickly back then. Uh, and even now is as that people start to f resonate, they start to understand you as a human being uh, and the people within the company as well. And I think there's people like Gilbert and, um, you know, Vickers and them who are also working on their personal brands. And I said, like, I think it's really a, a smart strategy for anybody. It's just not everybody is not always comfortable putting themselves out there. Mm. Uh, people, you know, start to overthink things. They start to become a little bit insecure about what people might think if they do join, uh, you know, the, the social club in a way where they put themselves out there and, and start talking about certain things that they are actually good at. And there's a lot of value that they can potentially share with the world, but for some reason, the insecurities hold them back. So I think, like I, I explained it to, I think I explained it to to someone in the week. I said, when it comes to pers building personal brand, I think we had a, a conversation about it last week. I said, it's such a smart ROI positive strategy if you can do it from the, in the, from the beginning. So if you can build a personal brand around your business, if you're starting out, you increasing the the probability that someone is going to want to work with you purely because the person on the other side might connect with you and they and they going to start mm. building trust and credibility you know with you as well uh, they can see that you're a real human and that creates a, a lot of trust especially in the beginning um and like i also said you don't have to stay the face of your business forever uh, mm. but if you are starting out then it is a good move, uh, not just for yourself. You know, if your business failed, then you can always leverage your personal brand into getting a job or to leveraging another opportunity. So I think a personal brand for you or being the face of your business is, is always ROI positive because it brings opportunity your way if the original idea maybe doesn't work out the way that you thought it would having eyeballs on you and what you have to say it's just smart um so yeah i hope people listen and actually take action as well and and it's, it's not that we've been preaching this this is not new information i mean gary v has been preaching this since 2012. absolutely um, and i mean i i did a very similar thing and I, in fact fun story the first business i built was actually a faceless company and it didn't grow as fast as i ideally thought it would um it was, it was called Fitness 101. I never wanted to be the face of the business. And I had a friend of mine who had a very similar business. 
and he was 100% the face of the business. And he grew so much quicker than me, purely because of the fact that people got to know him and they started following his journey and they bought into him as a coach. And on the other hand, on my side, it was a faceless company. So people didn't know if they could trust us, if we were actually from South Africa or people didn't know mm. much about us except for what's online. And, you know, it was people were quite skeptical about those things. So when I mm. sold that business off to someone else, I said to myself, the next business I'm going to start, I'm definitely going to be a bit more present as a human being um, in the business from a, from a social media standpoint. And um, it's made a massive difference in, in our growth when we started out in 2018. Wow. So wow. I do believe that it's ROI positive for everybody to do that starting out. So um, this, this topic resonates so much with me and I see there are many questions. So people basically want some tips and I'm going to share some amazing tips with you guys on how I am overcoming. So I, I think we'll never be at a point where you overcame your fear of public speaking or going live or whatever, but it's getting comfortable that it's okay if things don't go perfect. But um so I use, I am an introvert as well. So for those introverts watching, I'm going live and I'm an introvert. So if I can do it, definitely anyone can do it. And um, I just, there's something that clicked and I want to share that with you guys. So um, when I worked in my company, uh, in the business before, when I worked for a boss, so I was so afraid to share what I knew, like we would sit in a boardroom and I couldn't even pray in front of the entire office. Like, you know, every Monday we would make turns on whose turn it is to pray, like in the boardroom. I like, I would just go red and be so anxious, like really have this anxiety attack just because I had to speak out loud. And, um, but I always had this desire to be able to share my knowledge and to share my voice with people out there but I never knew how. And in 2017, I helped a lady market her event. And she was so impressed with the way we did it with social media that she said to me, oh, I actually want you to talk because it was an event for business owners. And I want you to talk to these business owners just 15 minutes and share your knowledge on social media. And I was like, oh, my word. But anyway, I, um, I presented before going up on stage. It was about 100 people. I literally felt nauseous. I'm like, I cannot do this. But what happened after that 15 minutes changed my life forever. So after I went off on, uh, from stage, I was just like, this was terrible, terrible. But then um, in the break, people, people, business people came up to me and they're like, Magrit, you know what you shared was life changing. I, I cannot believe all the knowledge you shared. And I'm thinking to myself, how is this, you know, here I am worrying about myself and actually I'm making an impact on someone who's got um, a very big business. And they tell me what you share today was life changing. It's going to change my business so much. And that is where everything changed for me. So for you guys who feel afraid of social media, know that it's normal. Everyone feels that way. It's not because there's something wrong with you. Okay, I'm also an introvert. So what happened that day, the penny that dropped or something that clicked is that I have value to share for someone else. So now when I do this, when I go on a live or when I have to speak on stage, I don't think about myself. I'm like, you know what? If there's one person today out there, one person getting value from my journey, from my experience, from all the knowledge I've gained, then I have made a difference in the world. So let me know if anyone is getting value from this, then it's also helping me. So I want you next time when you make a post on social media, just to think, you know what, if it's only one person, one person who's impacted by this. And that message has helped so many of my students. So yesterday I spoke to Annette, she's an artist. And, um, you know, I shared the story with her and then she started making um, Instagram reels and posting on social media. And last year, and she doesn't regard herself as someone that's good on social media. Last year, she got contacted by someone to 
be on TV, like on a TV show. And she's like, what? Wow. Just be before, because I posted. So she learned it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just where you are, what you are doing. And it was so amazing to talk to her as well and learning that she also feels like we all do, but then she just posts anyway. And then people start saying, wow, this is so valuable. It's so helpful. You really helped me today. So it really is something that I'm super passionate about. And it's about understanding that whoever you are, every single person has value to share your life, your story, your experience that you've been through. That is valuable to someone else. And that is why powerful why social media is so powerful because it's this channel where we can connect as humans and where we can learn from each other and be inspired by other people. Yeah. I, I have a, this belief that there is always a lesson to be learned from every single person in your life, even the people you don't like or even the people that you think are not as smart <laughs> as you would ideally you know, want them to be. And the reality is, is like, it doesn't matter uh, always about what is said, but it's more the perspective that is shared that gets you to think in a different way. Um, I think sometimes we're so stuck in our own heads that mm. by taking a step back, you can see a bigger piece of the puzzle, which allows you to connect dots mm. very differently too. And by starting to understand other people's perspective, at the end of the day, you are broadening your own mind, which allows you to connect more dots when it comes to the moves that you're supposed to be making, which increases the probability that you're making the right decision for you and your career and your business. So by you without actually knowing it, there's someone who says something in the moment, it might not sound like something extremely valuable, but often it's just a perspective shift that goes, hey, I haven't really thought about it like that. And you take that with you. And um, that's why I enjoy conversations so much. I enjoy speaking to people mm. I do not agree with. I love speaking to people I don't agree with, purely because of the fact that that is what allows my mind to broaden. It allows me to zoom out and see the whole picture, as opposed to, you know, the limited viewpoint that I might have on the matter. And what's it's funny, I, I used this analogy the other day. I said, everything that happens in your life is almost like a statue, right? Mm. And everybody is standing around the statue. So imagine this is a statue. All the people who are looking at the statue are standing in a circle. And everybody has got a different perspective of the statue because everybody is seeing the statue from a very unique angle. So if you are standing in a circle, you're standing next to someone else, then you have this viewpoint of the statue. You might see the back of the statue. The other person might see the right back of the statue more than the person on the left. And you the other person might see the right of the statue and the other person might see the front of the statue to everybody. The statue looks completely different. So the belief that I have is that we should try and walk around the whole statue before we really make a decision, as opposed to just listening to one person's perspective on the matter, because all they have is a very limited viewpoint of that event or that statue. Mm -hmm. Even when people give you advice, that advice is really taking into account all the nuances of the situation. And what I mean mm. by nuances, I mean your cash flow, your industry, your profit margins, your operating expenses as a business, what you have to be spending money on to survive, etc. So by listening to advice, it's a very, very dangerous thing. The only time I listen to advice is when someone is doing exactly what I'm doing, mm. almost to the T in the same industry, and they two or three steps ahead of me. Because when they're mm. too far ahead, they can't resonate with you and give you contextual practical mm. advice. When they're not in the same industry, then they're just looking at the statue from a completely different side to what you're looking at. So mm. the only time I really listen to advice is if someone is exactly the type of business owner that I am in the exact same industry, and they're two or three steps ahead of me, mm. and they've had the exact same troubles as I have had, then I can go, okay, cool, that makes sense. Let me give this a shot. Therefore, I'm saving a lot of time but if it's not, mm. you need to walk around the whole statue in order to connect all the dots for yourself before you make the best decision for you. I think that's just a perspective that I've adapted at a young age. Yeah. And and if and if we think about what you just said, um, 
you cannot listen to someone who's too far ahead because they can't resonate with you. They need to be two or three steps ahead of you. And I love that if we turn it around to, okay, so it means that anyone can start helping others or share what they know or it, or um, share about their industry or their product because you are two or three steps ahead of someone else. So when I started out my social media journey and I had to be online and share advice and um, teach people social media, I was thinking to myself, but why would anyone listen to me if they could listen to someone like Gary V, which was obviously like you say, since 2012, the leader in this industry. And then I realized, but people, not all people want to learn from him because they are too far away. They maybe just want to learn from someone that's, that they can resonate more with. And it's very much the same for every single person. We, we don't have to be the Oprah of our industry to actually start helping someone who's two or three steps behind us yeah. because the they want to learn. Not everybody loves Gary V. Like the thing is not everybody enjoys exactly. his teaching style. So yeah. it's you find people that you enjoy listening to because you resonate with them because you connect with them on a deep level. Yes. And I think there is, there is someone for everyone in this industry when it comes to a partner that you can spend your life with, or whether it's a mentor that can actually help you and can mm. avoid mistakes that, you probably, you know, can avoid. So it's understanding everybody's unique and your uniqueness will be more in frequency, more energetically aligned with someone else. Mm -hmm. It might not be Gary Vee. It might not be Oprah. And you as the person that is sharing the valuable insight that you have, there is someone on the other side happy and willing and excited to connect with you because they resonate with you more than they actually do with anybody else. Because often we look at these authors and speakers and we feel like we have imposter syndrome, but the reality is, you know, there's a group of people who connect with them and resonate with them and there's a group of people who don't. And once mm -hmm. you stop putting yourself out there and your business out there, there will be people who enjoy working with you and resonate with you too. Uh, a lot of times people go, oh, there's enough people doing that in that space. I don't want to do that because there's just too many of them. We came into one of the most saturated markets um, basically in 2018. Marketing agencies were already very uh, saturated, the industry, and we came in and I think we've we've done okay for ourselves um, as, as V8 Media. Now there's even more, but the reality is we continue to grow because we found our voice. And there are people who mm. enjoy that voice and resonate with that voice. And so mm. it will it'll be the same for other agencies and other businesses mm. and other industries. Yeah, and that's so important for every single business owner to find your voice online, to start sharing. And, and what you do is, I mean, in the beginning, you start sharing content and you feel like no one is liking it. It's not that no one is liking it. It's just that you need to go through this whole journey of getting comfortable, of feeling what is it that you really want to say. So if you are maybe a hairstylist or a beautician or whatever business you're in, you have value to share. You can help someone make a decision on who they want to choose and the only way for you to do that is if you go out there like my student Annette who said she just started sharing her art and making videos and then suddenly she was asked to be on television why she well just because she didn't not share she didn't not take action she also didn't feel like perfect she's just a normal person and suddenly she was on television now she sells and um, she's got art classes and she sells these little art booklets and it's just by understanding that each person has a tribe and you need that tribe needs to be attracted. So oftentimes we want to chase customers, we want to chase people, but we have to get into the whole thing of attracting. So you will attract the perfect people and you will repel the people that shouldn't be there. And, and for that reason, I am really not afraid of negative comments on social media because it's good to know that maybe there are some people that don't resonate with me. I once had a woman telling me my pronunciation is bad, you know, because I'm not, English is not my first language. 
But you know what? Maybe there are people that would prefer someone that speaks in a British English or a very good English. Well, good for them. But maybe there are people that prefer someone like me who goes live in my second language are brave enough to do it because that resonates with them. And I truly believe that every person with your weaknesses and your strength, when you mm. put yourself out there and when you start to find your voice online, you are going to attract the people, the business, the clients you need in your life. But when we sit, it's almost like I always think of people, we've got this like a little light or a torch, but we've got something covering it. So we're sitting in the dark. But the moment you start um, taking that cover off, you light the way for yourself, but also for other people, you light the way for them. And mm. that is why I appreciate it so much when people who are not, you know, good at uh, maybe the, the best social media people or the most well-spoken, but just go out there like that student I made of yesterday, when she goes out there and have the courage to do it, because that is what changes lives. That is what people connect with because it's true, it's authentic, and that is where we want to be to change lives. Oh, we've got so many Beautiful. questions, Yandra. Yeah, I think I we're going to have to start getting into some questions into before questions. we run out of time here. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can, so you can pull up start? the first one. Yeah, pull up the first one and let's get cracking. Okay, let's see where we are. Um, okay, so we would love to know how to choose the best audience on social media for running ads. Do you want to answer that one? Yeah, I mean, there's a few layers to that question in terms of the answer that I can provide. But I think if I'm not overcomplicating this for myself and hopefully for you, Charlene, then if you are on social media, I'm going to assume social media for now would be Meta, which is Instagram and TikTok, um, Instagram, Facebook specifically. And if you are talking about TikTok as well, it, the formula really stays the same is how to choose the best audience comes down to testing. You need to understand the product that you're selling. You need to understand who that product is suited to. So I think a lot of people have a product, but they don't know who are the ideal people who would want to buy that product. So you first have to do some of your own little research to find out who are the people who's really going to benefit from this. And mm. if you don't know that, <laughs> then you can be spending and wasting a ton of money on, on your ads purely because of the fact that the message that you're putting out there that's correlating to that product is not resonating with people because that product might not be solving such a big pain point as you thought it would. So you, as the business owner, need to understand your product or service and exactly who you're selling to already, regardless of what platform you want to use. So you just need to know, I have this product and people would want to buy it. I have this mouse and people who use computers are going to gonna buy, wanna buy, are gonna wanna buy it. And further than, you can even dive further and deeper into that saying, what kind of people are we trying to sell the mouse to that have computers? Is it C-suites? Is it creative designers? Is it, uh, you know, people who are, you know, uh, coders or programmers, whatever it is. You can go as deep as you want to go uh, with that specifically. But I think first you need to understand the product and who it's suited to. And then you go and test those audiences on Facebook and Instagram, uh, mm -hmm. Meta, for example. So you can literally go start running ads. Um, conversion ads is a great way if you have an online store or if you're looking to generate leads, conversion ads work really well, especially if you're driving people to a website and you can go into interest targeting and go and test specific audiences. So you can go and test uh, people interested in programming and see if they buy the mouse. You can go and test people mm -hmm. interested in IT, uh, people interested in uh, content, maybe content creators who might want to work on computers all day long. So this is how you start to test what audiences might work best for your business. Um, and then you can have a look at what the data is telling you, what is the data representing, uh, what audiences are actually converting, what audiences are actually making you money buying the product. And that's how you refine the strategy. And um, I think beyond that, if, you've, uh, if you want to get a bit, maybe a bit technical, but some people might already have a list of people that they've sold to. So if you don't know who the exact audience is, you can use that email list and upload it to Facebook and ask, uh, ask Meta to look for similar people to that audience, mm -hmm. um, you know, if you didn't know who to target. So that's one another option. I don't want to overcomplicate it much further, but I think that should be enough to, mm -hmm. to answer the question. 
Absolutely. So, um, Charlene, we also have a masterclass at the end of the month. Michaela will give you the link where I also teach a little bit of that. So, let's see. Um, Darlene van Weyck is saying, I'm scared of doing lives. Yes, it's definitely insecurity. So, it is normal to be scared of doing lives. That is like... Um, you know, all public speakers, they say when they go up on stage, you know, they, they still have nerves. So what I would suggest is starting out with pre-recorded videos, doing a little video where you share something, make it short, you know, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, and start posting that. And then um, what works very nice with lives, if, if you do it with someone else, you know, you ask someone, let's go live together. And here's a big tip. If you go, if you really, really want to do lives, but you are scared and you want to practice, do it on TikTok. Okay, so TikTok is the platform where you can just do anything. You can practice stuff. It doesn't have to be perfect. No one's going to judge and you that, on TikTok. No one's going to judge you. Like it's not as judgmental the platform as Facebook and Instagram, and it's weird. I don't know why. So um, just go on TikTok. Go live. You can just go live and work and do anything just to get over that fear. And then um, maybe ask someone, maybe one of your, what I love to do is I love to talk to my, my students in the social media business school. Then I would just talk to them, talk to them about their business, you know? Um, so ask someone, maybe one of your clients, just talk to them. What did they enjoy about the service and make it short, you know, 10 minutes. And before you see you go live, it's, it's incredible. You know, it's it's incredible. It's it's just starting. So definitely start with, with TikTok. Okay. okay. So we've got a question. How to grow your reach organically? Hmm. That's a nice one, Yandre. Um, look, I mean, from my side, I'm I'm happy to share some perspectives, but I think you more the organic uh, queen. <laughs> Then I am okay. the organic uh, king. But I think from my side, uh, you know, you first need to have a message that you want to share with people. I think it's really understanding that there needs to be a specific message that you want to share. What is that message? Um, for example, I talk about marketing and I talk about business. So when I do share information, mm -hmm. it's usually in connection with those two things. And I can then put a message out into uh, on Instagram, for example, use some hashtags, uh, which will then automatically be filtered into those segments of people who are also interested in business and marketing, etc., uh, which increases the odds of people that are not following you seeing your content. And if the content is good enough and it resonates with those hashtags or the people following those hashtags, there's a good chance that those people will find that content and then look at your content specifically and start to follow you as an individual. That's just a simple way of, of understanding how organic uh, growth really works. It's you putting content out there that people actually get value out of that people want to share with other people. Um, and by doing that, you should, you know, start to see a little bit more eyeballs on your content, but it does take time. And I think, Mahit, I don't know if, if you have mm. this perspective as well, but I think the beginning is the most difficult part, really, because mm. you don't really have anybody to share it with to, to almost like get that attention coming on the first few weeks or months of your uh, journey uh, might be a little bit tricky. And that's where you can maybe leverage, you know, other people's platforms or whatever it may be. But Mahit, you obviously probably got more insight on that. Yeah, so um, what I, I just first want to say, guys, if you're watching, please come share this video. Maybe that will bring value to someone else as well. So um, when you start out, like Yandre says, it is the hardest because of our perception that 100 people, 1,000 people must like or watch this. So it's first of all changing that percep perception. Like I am creating this content because... Number one, I'm passionate about what I do, you know, and in that finding your why, why are you doing what you are doing? For me, that's one of the most important thing when you want to know what content to create. So if I have to use myself as an example, what is my why? So I worked in corporate. It was hectic when I had kids. I couldn't attend any of their sport and my life was just terrible. It was a mess. And then I realized, but I have to make a change. I went into social media, started my own business, fired my boss, all that. So what does that mean for me as an individual and what I'm going to share? I'm going to share content on 
my that's based on my values. So I believe in the fact that you can be a mom and have a you can be a full time mom and be a full time business owner. Okay, so I would share advice like that. I have a value of freedom for me is more important than driving the best car, like having freedom of time to go out and go surf like tomorrow morning. So I would share in my business journey, I would share things like that. That could be maybe inspirational for someone else. Then with regards to what I do, which is specifically social media, I would go and look at what are the biggest struggles that people have. So for instance, after this live, I can see, okay, there was a lot of people saying that, how do I go live? So that could be a piece of content. So people want to know how to go live. So maybe I can go and make a video and say, okay, guys, here are my three top tips on how to go live. Do this one, two, three, and there you go. Within 15 seconds, 30 seconds. And I would know that's valuable. So if you go in business, those questions that people think, uh, that people ask you, that you think, oh, you know, it's a stupidest question, or I feel like um, a tape recorder, that I have to answer this question all the time. So if a customer asks you something, and you have to answer that, you're like, okay, piece of content for social media. You can do it either with a video, which I know in the beginning is difficult. So you have to start somewhere. You can do it in a text post, like for instance, on Instagram. So saying, okay, here are my top three tips on how to um, make sure you don't get sunburned. So maybe you're a dermatologist, you know, or what, what, what is the best sunblock to use? So think about those general questions that people have. And then sometimes just post something that's fun related to your industry. So, the biggest thing is you have to post content. So organic growth, and that's very good for brands. And consistently. And consistently. And we know that brand supports, so it's brand support all other paid uh, media. So when I started out, I had like less than a thousand or two thousand followers on Instagram, and I was already making money because I was doing paid ads and I was thinking to myself oh this organic like I don't have to do it I just run ads but um now but then I realized it is important because when you build a brand and people get to see you that is how you build trust so maybe someone are considering making use of my service and now they go and do their research and they can start consuming content. So you need to have content out there that people can consume. Then they start to resonate with you. They trust you. So it's very, very important to put out that organic content. But you must also not start now and say, I'm going to post every day. Give yourself a month and say, if I can get you three posts a week, then that's good. Then, then maybe after six months, maybe four posts a week. Because a lot of people post like every day and it's so tiring they just like oh you know over it so maybe start with one post a week be consistent then two posts so it would be great if we could all get to a post a day which i don't i want to get there but i'm not there yet you know um so just that consistency is extremely important i think um there's one great insight thanks Mahit. um there's Natasha that says, Hey, Andre Makrita recently opened up a beauty room in Woodmead. I'm struggling to attract clients for digital marketing. Can you recommend? So actually under V8 Capital, which is one of our uh, companies under the V8 group, we invested in a beauty studio. So we have our own beauty studio. So I'm actually giving you advice as an owner in a beauty business. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. And we have gone as a, as a young lady in Alberton, we partnered with her and um, things are looking really good. So from our perspective, here's what we're doing. We use meta ads, Facebook and Instagram ads. We create offers. So I don't know what kind of beauty do you do, you know, whether you do laser treatments or whether you do pigmentation or whether you do microneedling or just hair and nail type stuff. Obviously it depends on what you do, but Actually, regardless of what you do, you're going to have to put an offer together. And often what I mean by that is saying, hey, you can get this service, microneedling, at 20% off for Valentine's Day. Uh, or you can get a full body wax at 20 or 30% off for Valentine's Day, which is you know something that I think a lot of people might want to consider, considering the time of the year. And 
you'd run that ad to people in your area, obviously. So you can on Facebook ad side, you can go and pick a location. So you can put your street address in there and say, I want to target people with a certain radius. I want to target females uh, specifically because they're going to give you a better return on your money because more females are interested in that offer than probably males at this point. And you then run that ad. Let's say, let's say hypothetically 50 bucks a day. Um, you can run it as a lead format or you can run it straight to a landing page where you have people leave their contact number, their email address, and they obviously their name. And then that takes them to a booking afterwards, a booking page where they can actually make a booking and confirm what time they want to show up for the specific treatment. And that's really the gist of it. So you need an offer of the service that you obviously want to sell and make it attractive for people. So the easiest way is just to say 30% off or um, maybe buy one treatment and get one free for a partner or you know, what kind of creativity you want to explore with that offer. You can then run the ad specifically to the people who you believe would be most interested to that. And you can either do a lead format that asks them to leave their details, which you can then leverage and use to phone them and confirm the booking and make a booking on their behalf. Or you can send them to a page where they have to make the booking themselves. And um, I think, yeah, just as an overview, top level overview, that is something that's been working really well for us. And we've been doing that for many other businesses too. Very simple. But very effective. Okay, brilliant. Um, Natasha, so just go out there and start experimenting. Um, the meta ads really works amazing. But in conjunction with that, start doing um, organic marketing as well. You know, start going out on Instagram tell people things. Yeah, I quickly want to tell a story uh, with regards to that. So some time ago, I was invited to talk at a very big nail expo. And before that time, this specific brand, um, they, they invited me before that time, I would go to a nail salon, and I couldn't really care what brand um, gel on my I put on my nails. And when I was there spending time with these nail technicians, um, listening to what they have to say, and the amount of knowledge they have like on the nail and the nail bed and then explaining to me why their product is so much better i'm like guys why don't you guys like do this on social media here i am a mm. customer i couldn't care less if i put this gel or that gel but i did not understand the journey i mean the the owner her journey she went on like there's so much people don't know about your industry so if you just start sharing like why it is so important to go for this treatment or just you know basic things i always tell business owners the things you must share on social media must almost be those things that you already forgotten you know about your industry so think of everyone else on the other side of social media being 10 years old we are all, we consume content as if we are 10 years old. So when you put out a piece of content there and a 10-year-old cannot understand what you are trying to teach them or tell them, then me with my two degrees is also not going to understand it. It's just going to go like, whoop. And it's, mm. it's funny. So it makes it actually easy. So start by, for your organic content, start by just um, answering people's stupid questions. Stupid in the sense because for you it feels stupid because you know so much of your industry. But for them, they don't know this. Start creating content around that and definitely then go into running ads as well. So thanks, Mahrit. I think this is the next question, a Zendis marketing question. We have a marketing company and also have new clients, clients that has no idea how social media work. They want to see difference in their social media uh, likes and followers in three weeks. How do you explain that to someone that doesn't understand this even after explaining to them it takes time they still don't understand and they want to move away from us to someone else well the reality is uh owning an agency um ourselves and having been doing this for i think six years now this is now our seventh year that we're moving into uh i've come to realize that it all starts with setting expectations from the get-go so we don't really take on people who do not understand how these things work so if we exp explain all the pros and the cons best we can over a call 
and we then lay out the risk and then if someone wants to proceed they can proceed but like you say even though you do articulate these things they might choose to ignore it or they just might forget it and what you can do is from my perspective is reflect on yourself and ask yourself is there a better way that you know to approach the situation mm -hmm. from an actual result standpoint so the first thing is can you actually start getting results of people within a shorter time period um you know sh is it worth spending a little bit of money on ads to get those results you know is it worth running uh, ads specifically for engagement just to make them feel that something is happening so the first part is just reflecting and asking yourself can you really improve your own service so that's usually what we do that's the first thing if a client complains or a client has feedback the first thing we do is go how can we actually leverage this to improve the service because there's always room for improvement so the first thing that you should do is go can i actually deliver a better service secondly did i actually explain it to them in a way that they will understand because as makrit just said like people are technically all 10 year olds when it comes to <laughs> the, the, the world that we live in so have you we explained it to them in a way that they'll understand and have you set the necessary expectations so if they say we want results within the month then you shouldn't be the person signing that client if they have an unrealistic expectation or you should say you know i'm happy to take your money but this is most likely not going to happen as quickly as you want it to so i just want to lay out the risks of this you know venture for you so that you don't think that we bad at our job but that you actually understand the truth of the matter and i think if you be a bit more honest and not too scared to highlight that because i think a lot of people who are do have businesses and if, especially if you're a supplier to someone else the reality is you're so scared to say something that you think they're going to take the wrong way that they might choose to go with someone else and i think what we've gotten very comfortable mm -hmm. at v8 media is just to be brutally honest and mm -hmm be as honest as possible and if the client or the prospect on the other side doesn't appreciate that honesty then they're not probably the ideal client that you need to work with because if you're going to look past the truth mm -hmm. and be completely oblivious and ignorant to it and you refuse to take in and absorb what we have to say about the matter then this is going to be a red flag <laughs> for us mm -hmm. as as a client and it's most likely not going to be a fun relationship so those people are probably not your ideal clients um so first reflect and ask yourself can i do a better job secondly it's uh really trying to make sure that you have explained it best you can and that mm -hmm. you lay out all the pros and cons clearly um and then thirdly it's just understanding that the, the clients like that will still fall through the cracks and end up mm -hmm. in your business so even though we set the expectations even though we reflect even though we do everything we can we still have clients who sign on and, and do expect, you know, their revenue to triple within 30 to 60 days. And if it doesn't happen, you know, it, it becomes it becomes a numbers game. So if you sign hypothetically five clients a month, hopefully one out of 10 clients gives you that kind of trouble as opposed to four out of five clients or six out of 10 clients uh, giving you, you know, that same spiel. So I don't think the problem ever goes away it's just the percentage of people that happens to reduces the better you get at reflecting and improving your own service and at the same time getting better at articulating the pros and cons and being upfront with the person on the other side so but keep in mind people will still feel that way that's just how it is and you, what you need to do is keep your head up try and improve your business best you can and then continue walking the path Great advice. I think, um, and we spoke about this just before the call, Yandra and I, going into that state of um, not pushing against things, because maybe currently you just want to try and help every single customer, but every person needs what you offer. So you can actually go and pick and choose and not be afraid of telling someone no, I'm not going to be able to help you. Just, just go and reflect and think, who are these people who I can really help? And go into that mindset of not trying to chase customers, but attract, attract the right kind of people.
Mm. Yeah, so well said. Um, there's so many questions, Yandra. I don't know. Yeah, we're probably going to have to keep Which our one? answers shorter and, and more to the okay. point. So okay, okay, okay. Pauline here says, does marketing such as flyers, car magnets uh, work where and such still work, especially if you are a one-man band doing your own thing? So, you know, I, I want to say that you can still get away with it maybe, but if you're going to do flyers back in the day, you had to do a thousand and you would have gotten good response today. You're going to have to do a hundred thousand in order to get some response. Mm -hmm. It's understanding that it's, it's an outdated marketing tactic. It doesn't mean that it doesn't work because there's still people doing it and they wouldn't be doing it if it didn't work to some extent. The reality is, it's just how much money do you want to spend on the amount of flyers needed to actually get attention? And can you spend that money somewhere else that would get you more attention at a cheaper cost? And I think the answer mm -hmm. to that question is, depending obviously what industry you're in, is there's most likely a better way to spend that money. That way would be running Facebook ads uh, and maybe trying TikTok ads, but I would say Facebook and Instagram ads specifically. You can literally take, as opposed to a thousand rand on flyers, you can take a thousand rand and run people straight into a WhatsApp conversation where you could potentially sell them the specific service that you actually want to sell. So that's my short answer. And then I just quickly want to add to that. So remember, even when people see your flyer and they are interested, what is the next thing they're going to do? They're going to look at you on social media. So um, if you don't have a social media presence, that flyer is probably not going to work at all. If you do have a social media presence to support that, then you know, but definitely um, return for investment would be definitely social media. Okay, what's our next question? So we are relaunching. What are the pros? Sorry, Makrit, pros and cons of being your own face of the brand. And would you say that using a model to be the main face would be a good idea? So I can just speak to this. I wouldn't advise getting a model to be the face of the brand because what if you and that model have a different conversation two years down the line where she's tired of working with this brand or you have a fallout or you know, then everybody that has resonated with her in connection to the brand, you know, there would be some issues. So I wouldn't go out and hire a model to be the face of the brand because that'll be almost like a bit of a short-term solution. I would want to pick something a bit more concrete, um, which is you as the founder, most likely. If I mean, you're most likely going to go down with the ship. So the person who is always going to be in the company is most likely going to be you. Therefore you are the safest bet to be the face of the company. And I think alongside that, the pros are that you can build trust and credibility a lot faster under your audience, especially as a new business, you will be able to then sell products or services at a much cheaper cost compared to people who are a faces company or who don't have a face behind uh, or a model or influencers working alongside the company. The cons are, though, that if you ever wanted to build a business that you can sell, your business shouldn't be dependent on you as an individual, internally and externally. And what I mean by that is that you should not be, as the business owner, doing all the stuff in the business every single day, if you ever want to sell the business or create value around the business that you could potentially sell it one day, because no investor is going to want to buy that business if the only person that's able to run that business is you, number one. Number two, from an external standpoint, you don't want to be the face of the business uh, only either, or you don't want the business to be dependent on you. You can still be the face of it, but you don't want the business success to be dependent on you as an individual to be the face of it. Because if an investor or someone ever wanted to buy your business, they're going to do devalue your business and go, well, if we buy you out and you're not there anymore, then our sales are going to tank because you're going to be gone. And that is something that you obviously want to avoid. But that's more of a long-term thing. So the reality is short-term, it is ROI positive to be the face of your business. Long-term, you might want to be the face of the business, but still make sure that the business can survive mm -hmm. without you. And you're doing it as an additional layer to success and not the needed or what is needed for the success at the end of the day. So I think that is just my take on the matter. 
Absolutely. So I quickly want to um, just say something here. I'm coaching with Tessa. So Tessa, um, you say that I love the idea that I'm only, only a few steps ahead of someone else. It gives me motivation to take another step. So this is a very important concept and especially for coaches. So if there's other coaches um, listening as well, it really helps to understand that for you as, you as coach, you also need to attract your tribe. You don't want to coach every single person in the world you don't want to coach coach elon musk for instance so you don't want to put out yourself as someone that's going to coach this person you maybe want to coach just a mommy next door who are struggling with anxiety because of school and not maybe coping between work and children so all you need to do is think about that so when you give advice on social media just say you know i've got three tips mommies i know how you feel whatever it is that that you are coaching so think of one person when you go out on social media okay Ooh. let's see what is next uh Zandile says, how do you run a successful social media campaign for organization that has mostly consecutive audience? I don't understand that question. Do you? Mostly a consecutive audience. As a, but probably construction audience. Yeah, so I think... Consecutive. Not sure. I can't answer that question if I don't understand it. So I'm going to move on to the next one. Okay. Uh, Marilyn, we are trying to reach a more diverse audience. How does one go about targeting different demographics? That's easy. You just go onto Facebook and pick other people. <laughs> so I want to keep this as short as, as possible, but also as valuable as possible. So in your meta ads, where you're running, hopefully ads, if you're not, then that's something you should be doing or look into at least. And if you haven't experimented with a specific audience, you go into the ad set level. That is where you can choose the demographics. You can say, for example, as opposed to targeting males, we now want to target females, as opposed to targeting uh, people between the ages of 25 and 35, we now want to target people between 35 and 45 because they're going to be most suited to this product. That's how you do it. You literally just go into the platform that you're using to advertise and change the demographics in there. But you need to ensure that your message now aligns with those new people as well, the demographic specifically as well. Because if they don't resonate with the message, you're not going to see a good return on the money that you've invested. You're going to think that the product is not worth selling to those people. But meanwhile, it's just the message that you've put out that's actually the problem and not the product itself. So that's my two cents on the matter. Awesome. So guys, um, I actually have a Facebook training starting now at 11 with my students. So I definitely cannot stay longer than this next two minutes. And actually, Gilbert is doing our coaching today, Yandre. Oh, so awesome, yeah, so so Great. he coaches uh, one of Yandre's um, partners or members or whatever, um, helps us with the Facebook coaching. So that's exciting. So I don't know, I think uh, maybe I can quickly answer this one. So the answer is uh is yes um but go and see yourself on social media do you consume more videos or more text posts and that would be the answer but generally reels should give you more real more um exposure uh, exposure but there are accounts that are brilliant that only use text or images that also does well so it's about the quality of the message but generally the platforms do prefer videos because that's the kind of content that we like to um consume maybe we Alfred, can if you have to go or... i'll hang around and finish some questions okay. so you okay. can go and then i'll finish up for us okay perfect okay so i am going to leave then because i need to log into zoom um then just know that we've got a social media masterclass coming up for those of you who are interested you can just go and dm us i'm not sure though because you are not the host of this Call. so if i you can just stream, you can just leave oh yeah you can just leave i can't um, leave i i only can end i can remove you yes you can do that okay bye cool so from my side yeah you can just keep maybe the tab open on on your side and while you log into your zoom and stuff and just maybe mute us if there's any noise on your end if you're still there but Answering Chris's question quickly, uh, Chris, which platform is the best one to advertise your product? So you need to understand that every platform is different to every industry, to every product. So in order to really answer that in a very effective way, in a practical way that you can actually take the information and do something with it, I'm going to need more information. But 
it's safe to assume that Google, and that would be obviously search shopping and YouTube, uh, and Meta, which is Facebook and Instagram, and TikTok in itself, you between those three platforms, technically, you're reaching 90% of people in the world, uh, or wherever you want to be advertising, essentially. So I want to say consumer focused products, if that's what you're selling, might work better on platforms like Meta and TikTok. Um, and if it's, I mean, I want to say more business focused products, then Google is also a good option and LinkedIn is a good option. Uh, but yeah, that's very vague and very vanilla top level advice. Uh, obviously need more insight in order to give you more contextual and practical advice. So Glenn says, does regular Facebook ads help vetting your company name and brand awareness out the even if people scroll past, meaning that it creates a mental print? Hope I make sense. Uh, oh, okay. So what you're actually asking is do regular Facebook ads help increase brand awareness and help could potentially help people remember who you are and hundred percent, hundred percent. You know, we've been investing in Facebook ads for ourselves since 2021 aggressively. And when I say aggressively, you know, we're looking at a minimum advertising budget of maybe 20, 30 K a month, 40 K a month sometimes. So it definitely increases not only awareness, but the amount of people that actually remember your brand and who you are. I have sometimes people come up to me and go, hey, you that guy that, talk, that guy that talks about business and marketing and I've seen your videos everywhere. And most of the time, they're most likely referring to the ads. So I can definitely vouch for the fact that it does work. And it's something that we've been doing consistently for about three years now. So if it's something that you want to consider, I can only vouch for it. Uh... My marketing focus for the year, consistent with purpose, beautiful. I agree with that. Uh, Ekis, Mostyn, I hope I've pronounced that correctly. What are the three main steps to take to get in a specific algorithm? Okay, so I don't know what you're saying. Um, why do you assume there are three steps? <laughs> so you're saying uh, three main steps to take to get in, in a specific algorithm. I'm assuming what you're asking is, how can you hack the algorithm of a specific platform like Meta and TikTok in order to get more exposure? And if that is what you're asking, then I'd say your message needs to be on point and it needs to be resonating with people on the other side because the algorithm is going to push content that people enjoy. And the only way they would enjoy it is if they resonate with it. So first, make sure the message is on point. Secondly, make sure you post at the right time of the day when most of your people are actually online so that there's an influx or a higher probability that more people will see it, which means more people will be able to share it. And I think hashtags is a great thing to include so that you can contextualize your content to specific people. So if, so, if you're saying hashtag marketing, digital marketing, for example, then there's a good probability that other people who have been engaging with similar hashtags will see your content. And obviously the amount of people varies depending on the algorithm and your own content and the uniqueness of it. But there's a probability that you'll be able to get more exposure by doing those three things. So if that is the question that you asked, then I hope that helps. Uh, Yolanda Blom, what if... What if I don't have a brand? That niche that we sell is not specific, not a specific brand. How do I convince my potential clients to buy or let them believe that they must have it? So how good is, are your negotiation skills? I think that's what it boils down to. But if you say you don't have a brand, um, you know, the niche that we sell does not have a specific brand. I think um, trying to understand that because whatever you're selling, you're obviously selling it to a specific people. So if you're selling, for example, solar panels, then uh, you are in the solar panel niche. If you're selling beauty products, then you are in the beauty niche. So what I uh, need to understand maybe what kind of products you're selling because that will be able to give me an idea of what niche you're actually in because all products belong to a specific niche um, unless you're selling groceries, which is still a big niche, which is just food. So just trying to understand what you mean by the fact that your products are not connected to a niche. And how can you convince people that they must have it? Well, at the end of the day, 
that's where you know marketing really comes in it's really if you're driving people to a website then you can use that page that website page to articulate the benefits of the product to get people to understand the price of the products to make them feel that the price is actually a really good uh, investment for the type of pain point that you might be solving you can talk about the specific pain point in depth and how it can change their lives once they actually buy that product because the thing is like that's what you, your job should be as a marketer when it comes to selling is how do you convince people and you convince them by making them understand the value of the product and how do you make, get them to understand the value of the product is by talking about how the product solves specific pain points uh, making the cost of the product not seem as much if it is an expensive product or make them feel like it's a good deal so yeah there are ways to do that trust and credibility so you can feature other people who have bought that product and who've loved that product as well so that trust and credibility with the understanding of how the product solves a specific pain point with handling specific objections so that the price actually seems like a good deal can help you convert more people into clients and customers Will TikTok videos or YouTube videos? Let's quickly have a look at this one. Yolanda as well. Will TikTok videos or YouTube videos that is done on a more relaxed way do better than the more serious ones? It all depends on your audience um, at the end of the day. Like it really doesn't matter. I've got a mix of both on my Instagram channel. Um, so you can just look for Yandre de Beer and you'll see. Like I've got a mix between business content that's straight to the point. I've got more relaxed content that just shares different perspectives. So it all depends. I think it depends on who you speaking to i speak to business owners really most of the time and i share different things that are applicable to them so marketing is applicable to a business owner business advice is applicable to a business owner but also mindset is applicable to a business owner so those are the three things i talk about the marketing advice is usually more straight to the point um because i want to condense as much value in the shortest time possible and the mindset stuff is usually a Bit more relaxed because there's nuances that you need to unpack and uncover to, for people to truly understand the perspective that you want to share so i think a mix of both and you can just see what works best for your audience and do more of that should you wish daniel potriter let's see what you're saying over here what is the best way to market our new travel and shuttle service on social media as it is a service um so on social media i would just run ads um, I would I would actually fo maybe focus on Google ads because not everybody on social media might be interested in that. And, and because it's such a timing thing, like something that has to be timed, uh, not everybody is looking for a shuttle service. So if I've used a shuttle service during December, but I don't need it now. So if I engaged with the content of the shuttle company and I see more shuttle uh, ads, shuttle service ads in my newsfeed. Now I'm not going to engage with them anymore because I don't need that service anymore. So the service is very on demand and it's not something that anybody just uses throughout, you know, the week or the month necessarily. So in that case, you want to have a strategy that only shows someone the message if they're interested in it. And that's why Google ads will work really well because people who have the intent to actually hire a shuttle service will go to Google and search for a shuttle service. So therefore you can then run your Google ads and make your company show up when people are looking for that specific service. So I think Google ads might be a better way to go about promoting your business than social media ads, but there's nothing wrong with having awareness so that people know that should they need a shuttle service in the future that they can contact you. However, that might not always translate into short-term ROI. So Google ads might be a better option for short-term ROI with social media ads. Um, I would look at potentially remarketing your shuttle service on Facebook after driving people through Google. So everybody who's clicked on the ad from Google came to your shuttle service website. Maybe they didn't convert. Then you can remarket to them on social to stay top of mind should they ever want another service. Perhaps that's a strategy that I would maybe look at. Chanel, this might be very controversial. What are your thoughts of using your children as the face of the company? We sell kiddies items. I want to, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, in my opinion, I think at the end of the day, uh, I mean, a lot of people might get, a lot of people might be against it because they were like, oh, what safety concerns in the country that we live in or whatnot. But in my opinion, I don't really think it's going to make much of a difference i believe it can uh the pros are definitely outweigh the cons i don't think anybody 
I think it's a good idea, to be honest with you. Um, I'm thinking my, my mind is running at a thousand miles an hour at the moment, but I think the pros far outweigh the cons. Um, I don't know how old your kids are, but maybe it's not something that they want to do. Let's just make sure it's something that seems fun and that they want to do. Um, but if you're assuming, I'm assuming you're saying the face of the brand by just being in photos and videos, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But by making them the face of the company, uh, it's giving them a personality of such. Um, I wouldn't, I, w I don't know if I would do that with my kids though, uh, because it ties them in into the business and it might not, they might not always, I don't know, like it's a difficult one. Uh, I don't, I don't think that advice is, is, is black and white. It's completely up to you as a parent and your relationship with the kids in the business. That's all I can say. I think go with it. You can always start that way. You're definitely going to get more trust and credibility and potentially more sales because of a higher conversion rate if you do do it. And you can always just navigate the things that pop up afterwards. If you know, you're know you getting weird emails from people, then <laughs> stop. Um, if something happens that you don't prefer, then just stop. Simple as that. Um, but I think it's a good thing to want to test out and see where, where it goes. I think, is there any other questions? Um, so Chris said, I sell solar products. So Facebook works. We Facebook advertising works really great um, for solar companies. Uh, Google ads as well. So maybe try that out. Uh, Yandre, Will you have a live on website SEO in the SEO near future by any chance? I can definitely do that for you guys. Uh, SEO is a big thing. Email, both of them play a huge role in repeat purchases and lowering customer acquisition costs. So happy to do that. Definitely look into that for you guys. Um, I have a ladies clothing shop. Many think that we sell expensive clothing because of the look of the shop. How do I get the message across that we are very affordable? Put it on social media. Put it on social media and run ads to it. Simple as that. Um, get a tagline that connects the dots between the fact that your business looks premium, but you have affordable clothing. So you can just say premium clothes at affordable rates. That's a tagline that I just came up with. So maybe not the best one, but just gives you an idea and then just run ads and get people to click through or to come and check out the shop. I'm in the distribution industry and would like to attract more clients with the products we're distributing. What is the best way to advertise our products and get brand awareness? Uh, again, the answer remains the same. I think Meta is a great, great place to do that. It depends on obviously who you are distributing to. Uh, I would suggest every single company, in my opinion, should have a Facebook account, should have a LinkedIn account, and should have a TikTok account, and should be doing all three. But I think if you want to limit the amount of time that you spend on your marketing because you just don't have the energy and the resources to do everything, then um, distribution, if you're selling to other businesses, then maybe LinkedIn could be a good place to play around with because uh, you can connect with buyers in specific industries. So that is something that you want, want to do. Take your LinkedIn profile, start connecting with buyers in different industries, and then start posting stuff about your business behind the scenes, the type of stuff that you produce, or the type of stuff that you distribute. And those buyers might, you know, start to see it. And, you know, you can then see who saw it. So on LinkedIn, it says, you know, who viewed your post. And if they are looking at, if you see the same person looking at the content two or three times, and you just message them and say, hey, I'd love to connect for a coffee sometime. This is the kind of products that we sell. Here's why it's worth stocking. Um, yeah, I think... That's just one way. I have to move on to the, the next question. I'm also running out of time at the moment. So when is the best time during the day to do posting on social ads? So on Instagram, for example, you can actually see what time your people are online. So I would suggest using the business suite for analytics and see when most of the people are online. I would say it's safe to assume um, that it's usually lunchtime and in the evenings. So ask yourself, when do people open up their phones more often and when do they spend more time on their phones usually during lunchtime and in the evenings um so start with those two and test and see what happens i literally had a spreadsheet at some point that said i posted at this time on this day and use these hashtags and then i would 24 hours later keep track of how many people reached engaged etc and then i would test out different times of the day to see what works best i mean just an idea if you really want to do it properly 
All right, there's a couple of other questions, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get to everything. I have to shoot now as well. I want to say much love to everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, we're going to be doing this every Thursday as often as we can. So if you do have more questions, feel free to connect with us, email us, and um, yeah, we'll see you next week Thursday. Much love. Have a good one. And uh, have a great Friday and weekend. Bye. Blessings.